Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to my DIY workshop. This video shows you how to use a handsaw. It is one of three videos on the subject of sawing wood and the other two cover using a manual mitre saw and an electric jigsaw. Woodworking saws come in various forms and they are specified by length of cutting blade and the number of teeth per inch. This is a good general purpose hand saw. It has a 20 inch cutting blade, 7 teeth per inch, it is flexible and it is suitable for cutting along the grain or across the grain. The saw I just showed you was typical of many whereby it only cuts on the push stroke. So it's cut, withdraw, cut, withdraw. However, this saw is different because it cuts in both directions. So it's cut, 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 cut. Having said that, it still cuts better on the push stroke than on the pull stroke. Saws with bigger teeth will actually cut faster but you get a rougher finish. If you want a very fine finish then you need to use something like this with 12 teeth per inch. The teeth are much smaller. It's a 10 inch blade. It has a rigid back which has the advantage of keeping the saw dead straight but the disadvantage of limiting the depth of cut. All woodworking saws have a special set on the teeth. They're slightly angled outwards alternatively. What that does is gives you a wider cutting slit than the thickness of the steel blade and the advantage of that is that it prevents the saw from jamming and also gives you a little bit of leeway for adjusting your cutting line. A blunt saw means that it doesn't cut so effectively which means that you need more cutting strokes to cut the distance required. That will tempt you to try and force the saw and that in turn will lead to easily cutting off line, not square and possibly hurting yourself. The sort of materials that blunt your saw more quickly are hardwoods like oak or MDF board or particularly chipboard. On top of that, if you're sawing an old piece of timber, look out for old nails and screws buried in the timber because if you hit one of those with your saw, it'll really take the sharpness off the teeth. Now then, how to grip a saw? The conventional way is to grip it with your hand with the index finger pointing down the blade. This has the effect of stabilising the saw as against holding it like this where it can move about more. If you're left-handed then it would be like that with your left index finger down the side there. When you make a saw cut you want to accurately follow a line and cut square. The secret of doing this is that you centre your nose over the saw blade so that one eye can see down there and the other eye can see down there and you'll soon see if you're starting to saw offline. Also that gives you the chance to check that your saw blade is at 90 degrees to the workpiece. So this is how we do it in practice. I've got my nose centred over the saw blade and I'm cutting. Now if I see that as I cut I'm going offline this way then I need to, as I saw, move the handle a little bit that way. Move the handle to correct the misdirection. Likewise if you see that you're going down at an angle like that or like that then you twist the handle a little bit to correct it. So all the time you're sawing you should be asking yourself two questions. Am I cutting along the line and am I cutting square to the surface of my workpiece? When setting out to cut a piece of wood 
you need a firm surface like this workbench and you need something to stop the workpiece sliding about. If I try and cut this without any support, the wood keeps moving about and I'm not cutting efficiently and probably won't cut accurately either. The solution is a bench hook. This piece of wood hooks on the bench like that. This piece of wood stops the workpiece moving forward as I cut. If I push my hand against that, hold it in place, I can now cut very steadily, which means I should get a nice cut and accurate. An alternative way of holding the workpiece is still if you've got a bench but also with a vise, you can clamp your workpiece in the vise and sort away steadily. Whilst we're using the vise, we can also clamp the wood there like that. Using a bigger saw, we can cut that way. And as you, if you wanted to saw all the way down the piece of wood, just keep lifting the wood in the vise as you go. What you don't want is a great big distance here from the point of grip because you get more of a, a juddering effect and the saw is not cutting efficiently because this is um, shuddering. So cut well down in the vise and as you get down to here just lift the piece of wood up and cut a bit more. Now the other thing I'll uh, tell you uh, whilst using this sample is that I've marked my line both sides because when you're cutting that thickness it's possible to go off. So although on this side it might seem that you're cutting down the line, over here you're actually going off. So by turning the wood round from time to time You can make sure that you're always cutting down the line. Another thing to tell you, it's a good tip this, when I'm doing a very long cut I always like to do two lines and the gap in between is where the saw is supposed to go. Over here I've only drawn one line and the, the theory is to uh, saw down the side of the line but to be honest I find that easier to follow. Alternatively, uh, I'm now resting on um, a saw stool. So again, I can just lean on it now with my hand, press down. And by pointing the saw downwards, I'm helping to keep the piece of material hard on to there. If I try to go this way, I'm back to the problem of the piece of wood um, actually sliding about. Another way of anchoring your piece of wood is to clamp it onto a bench or some other surface and now we can cut very effectively because the piece of wood can't move. If I wanted to saw this piece of wood all the way down, I've clamped it again but I've got the saw bench this way and now I can lean over and then every now and again push the piece of wood up and re-clamp it. Now I want to talk about cutting boards. If it's um, a relatively thin board like this, keep your hand very near the cut line and that will stop it vibrating. This is an example of um, how we set about cutting a large board. This board is two foot by four foot, it could just as easily be four foot wide by eight foot and we need it firmly supported. So I've got it on two saw stools and I've got it clamped. And I've, in case this is very special furniture finish board I've got a piece of protective material to stop the clamp marking the material. So if we need to cut down the middle, say, we can lean across and kneel on so that we can get 
a nose directly over the saw to make sure we're cutting in a straight line. I've got one final tip for you concerning the cutting of your materials. If you use a large friendly timber merchant or DIY store, the chances are that they've got a cutting service available. So take a cutting schedule with you when you go to buy and let their machines cut your materials accurately and square to give you a flying start for your project. My other two videos about sawing wood are listing on screen over on the right. If you'd like to watch one now you can just click the item. Or if you'd like to subscribe to my channel you can click the circular avatar down on the left. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon.